You know, some things I just find unbearable. I'm sorry, that pun was barely legible. Alright, alright, this whole scene's just turning grisly. We need to move on. So... Your jokes are very bad. Ah. <laughs> ah. Come on. I mean, who's to say they won't grow? They won't grow on you a little bit. You know, just... You know, they'll grow like a, a cub into a full-blown, full-blown... I think they're pretty polar. All right, let me pull up my Kodiak and take a picture. Oh. <laughs> that one was a stretch. Because, yeah. So, yeah. Bears are scary. You want to know why they're scary? Because most of them... I said most, because not all. But most of them are very large. Yes. Um, like, bigger than some of the biggest puppers. Mm hmm So here's here's the thing I wanna emphasize. They're equipped with daggers on their fingers and in their mouths. But they're all friend shaped, so they're very Yes. So very misleading animals. So here are here's a size chart to emphasize bears versus humans. So your average human is under six feet tall. Around, I think the worldwide average was like five foot eight. And you have the black bear, which is common around here. Uh, the black bear, uh, they say, is fairly strong, but not, like, not completely impossible to fight off. What you also have is you also have the grizzly bear, which is commonly associated as, like, the most vicious, the biggest... No, it's it's in the middle of the pack. It's literally like seven to eight feet tall, and it's but it's still past the cutoff point of like you're probably screwed. Yeah. Then you have the Kodiak bear, which is the largest in the continental United States by like mainland United States, like forty eight, like the main forty eight states. This thing is terrifying. So this is like a this would be like a a motorcycle coming at you. This is like a, a sedan coming at you. This is a Ford F-150. These things can not only... Like, here's the thing. And you think, oh, I can just outrun it. No, you can't. No, you cannot. Because quadrupeds are naturally faster than, our, than, the, than bipeds. You can't even outrun the black bears. No. Bears on average, like, especially in the mainland United States, average 32 miles an hour. And not only that, they never get tired. They will, they will, they are born to chase things down. Then, of course, you have the polar bear, which is literally one of the most dangerous predators in the Arctic world. I mean, it devours everything. And there was one time. The only lucky thing about a polar bear is the idea that we probably won't run into them where we live ever. So. This is true. Now, I will say this. Polar, like, I, I know that Casual's probably going to talk about uh, how, you know, movies and television and commercials, how they make certain animals look amazing and they make other animals look like, look like crap. Coca-Cola made the polar bear, like, one of the most friendly-looking animals out there. And it's just like, you ever notice how there's no humans in those Coca-Cola commercials? Probably a good reason, because if there was, those grizzlies, they would drop those Cokes and just be like, fresh meat's back on the menu, boys, <laughs> and just start tearing you apart. Also, that's the other scary thing about bears. They're omnivores. Carnivores will kill you. Carnivores will literally kill you, and, like, they'll get their, they'll get their, like, jaws around your neck and snap your neck, and you're done. That's it. You're done. Bears don't do that. Bears literally bite you, pin you down, and start tearing chunks off of you while you're still alive. <sighs> Casual Geographic's got a video here talking about bears. And I guess we're going to watch it and see what he has to say. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Let's go. 
It's scientifically proven that one of the best ways to see how a guy's mind works to really see what type of person you're dealing with, ask one question. What's the biggest animal you can beat in a fight? You ask that and you'll learn a whole lot in a short time. <laughs> and in 2021, British firm YouGov did a survey. There's a lot to unpack here, but mostly the 6% of Americans that think they could handle a grizzly without getting their existence abolished. Three, two, one. Dead. Bye. And that's how long it would take. Bears are inevitable enough to be one of the few animals I have a one-shot rule against. As in, if they're coming at me full force and I have one shot in the chamber, I'm using it to self-medicate my exit off the mortal coil. I might not survive a hippo attack, but I'm for sure not surviving my reaction to one. I'll same day shit myself to the Lord's door before I let a chimp handle me, and I'll self-subtract with the quickness before a bear makes me part of its business. Bears are the most conceptually inconsiderate creatures in nature. It's basically a giant unhinged dog with every possible attribute maxed. Think about it. Nature dropped an apex all-terrain crossfit predator that can out everything you and just let the rest of the population deal with it. But what's the most dangerous bear actually? Well today we're going to be talking about every breed of bear and its chances of putting you on a shirt. Each bear will get a merc rating, merc standing for might eviscerate, ravage, or just cancel you. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's de definitely the K word that was supposed to be there. And as always, each race... Uh, yeah, he wanted to say kill, but... Where his channel's more popular than ours, uh, we can kind of sort of say it, but him, he has it in there. He, he, there was actually a video done recently, I saw, where it's actually a misunderstanding. Um, it's only because of TikTok that you can't say those words. YouTube, it's not in their policy, and they won't actually demonetize you for saying kill. Oh. Like so YouTube doesn't actually care about that. Well, so a lot of the times you actually hear it on shorts, it's because the shorts were just brought over from being made on TikTok and they didn't re-edit it to unedit those words, Oh, so. okay. Neat. Okay. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. will be in my very biased opinion. But yeah, call me Joe Rogan or Grinder Gladiator. Either way, we are going down to bear hole. <laughs> Starting with the sun bear. Named after the thing he spent way too long looking at. Those eyes stared <laughs> at the void and the void blinked first. And yeah. yes, they're built like they barely qualify to be here. He looks like a bear with crippling social anxiety that got told to act natural. They were recently involved in a controversy in China. The controversy was nobody believed that wasn't a man in costume. To be fair, they're easily the least coded Ursus out there. They're the smallest in the world at no heavier than a buck forty. And be honest, how long would it take for you to guess that foot was attached to a grizzly's cousin? Those bare feet help them climb trees, and some bears are the most tree climbing of them all. But how dangerous is this identity crisis? Well, well they're shy, inclusive, time. and mostly eat fruits and plants. They're also trigger happy, nearly blind, and they share real estate with tigers. Sun bears are known to attack people when caught off guard, and their poor eyesight means they can easily get jump scared by humans. They also have one of the strongest bite forces relative to body size of any bear, but probably only because they use teeth to rip through tree bark. There was even one case where a sun bear tiger showdown ended up with both of them becoming past tense, so what could they do to a human? Well, from 2000 to 2010, there were 33 sun bear attacks on humans, with the most common injuries being facial. But all the attacks were accidental encounters where the sun bears would probably argue self defense. And to my knowledge, there are no recorded cases. <laughs> of a sun bear killing a person. Orangutan's so, just like, fuck off. Orangutan's just like, my tree. Be like, out my face, homie. I don't know, you don't know me like that. <laughs> but with no body count and being the smallest, but also being neurotic enough to be a threat, I'll give the sun bear a merc rating of five. Next, you have the Andean, also known as the spectacled bear, for obvious reasons. On paper, he's the biggest land predator in that part of South America. Only technically, because only 5% of four eyes diet yeah. is meat. Like the sun bear, they're only really a jihad to fruits and plants. Also like the sun bear, the walking spectacle is very, very tree climbing, and they'll even build their version of a tree house to sleep in. To be fair, you don't really have a choice when your hall monitor's a jaguar. But don't think Buddy's sweet because he got glasses. They've been known to take out llamas, cows, and even tapers twice their size. But how dangerous are they to people? Well, in 2004, an Andean bear escaped from a Berlin zoo and made a beeline for the children's area. What followed was one of the most gruesome displays ever caught on camera. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> okay. You had me for. You had me worried, didn't you? Not gonna lie, you had us in the first half. Bear only has one human body on his record, and technically it was a hunter who shot the bear out of a tree only for the bear to land on him. I'm sorry, but <laughs> you failed physically. <laughs> Karmatic justice right yeah, there, for dude. Real. That's the universe being like, you screwed up, so fuck you. Yeah, exactly. Physics that hard, you deserve to get packed up by Paddington. And yes, Paddington was indeed a spectacle. Spectacles are also the closest living relative of, yeah, the short-faced bear. Oh my god, really? Whoa. 
Yeah, here's the thing, dude. That's some motherfucking Elden Ring loon bear right there. Well, here's the thing. You know that, like, the short-faced bear is traditionally considered, like, the biggest bear ever to exist. Bigger than polar bears. Dang. These things used to be massive. Like, hold on, hold well, on. That's supposed to be a saber-toothed tiger next to it. Yeah. Let's see. Short-faced bear... Yeah, short-faced bear... Um... Size. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, up, up right 10 feet. So, they were freaking massive. Yeah, look at that shit. Look at this. Oh my god. Like, that's a reconstructed one, and it is yeah. nearly twice as big. I remember seeing that one. Yeah. I, hold on. Ah, fuck you, Facebook. Fuck you, dude. It's like, I don't know. Like, okay. Here. I'll just show you here. There. Look at that. Bunch of humans standing next to a reconstructed one. That is terrifying. Yeah, it looks like it could crush your head with your, with one paw. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh. Anyway, back to this. Oh, the duality. But considering the only casualty was more to slapstick than a homicidal bear, I give the spectacled beast a merc rating of two. And now we're at the panda portion, which might confuse some since there's a genuine corner of the internet that'll tell you that pandas aren't actually bears. They'll sooner believe China has an obese biracial gerbil waddling around. To be fair, being a bear but identifying as a bamboo processing plant is a questionable life choice. But one, bamboo was so protein packed that Ursus Oreo actually ends up getting just as much as wolves and feral cats. And two, binging bamboo all day means pandas actually have one of the strongest bite forces of any land mammal. Wild pandas usually avoid people and there's currently no record of a plus size eyeshadow cotton ball killing a human. The pandas will 100% <laughs> Hello, hi, everybody's in a panda it. costume. It's the only way to like really make them calm. Yeah. Because they see that and they're just like, oh, well, uh, these pandas like let me out, so I'll just go over here now. I think pandas just have a fun reputation because like they're easily fooled by people like and they're like also thinking they're pandas and such. Like mm -hmm. it's just funny to me. <laughs> it's like it, it's like if you dress up in a big cat costume and like go up to a cat, the cat's gonna freak the fuck out. Like it doesn't like that at all. <laughs> it's gonna <laughs> ah! often with life altering consequences. No pandas just like oh pandas. other pandas. We're chill. Mm -hmm. Potential more than straight at the Beijing Zoo, a young panda named Gugu. In 2006, a drunk dude climbed into the enclosure to give Gugu a hug, and Gugu gave him an attitude adjustment with his teeth. After yep. several minutes of biting each other, yes, drunkie bit the bear. They were eventually separated with a fire hose. In 2007, a teenager tried Gugu and got chunks ripped out of his legs to the point where bones were showing. Ooh. And in 2009, a father climbed over a barrier to retrieve a toy his son dropped. His reward was his leg caught in Gugu's vice grip jaws that keepers literally had to pry open. I really think if pandas didn't wear the makeup, y'all would not be trying them like <laughs> yeah i mean if I, here's the thing yeah if pandas looked like that i would be like I a little more intimidating that. without the makeup aren't they like, he's like i ain't fucking with that you, you like you couldn't pay me to fuck with that this the worst part about getting mauled by something so goofy is it probably takes a long time for bystanders to realize you're in trouble they're the epitome of i'm not a killer but don't push me and for that Aww. they get a merc rating of four because really you get flatlined by a panda, you probably deserved it. Now we got the black bear, aka the fight back part of the rhyme. Which is kinda true, black bears are more likely to run away than run a fade. And after seeing them climb trees, thank the natural order for that. Although they probably- I like the look on that guy's face. <laughs> He's like, oh. So, oh shit. And as soon as he and the starts bear's just like, fade, oh, after, oh yeah, shit. It, it, he moves the pillow up and the bear's just like, oh fuck, a weapon. Ah! <laughs> seeing them climb trees thank the natural order for that although they probably only learned that from dealing with another bear down the list black bears are high-key champion generalists they're smart enough and adaptable enough to live almost anywhere in america also they're not always black but that's besides the point moonlighting as a giant raccoon means they run into people more than the average bear and if you look at the numbers they might not be as harmless as the nursery rhyme suggests. It, no. Since 1784, there have been 66 times where a black bear and a human resulted in one less human. Pretty low, but there's more. There's just under 12 black bear conflicts. Nope. 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 No. No. Going spelunking like that and winding up, like, like in front of you, like, especially if there's people behind you. If you run into that, like, well... We're dead. We're dead. We are literally fucking dead. 
At least the person in front of it. Defensive, 33% were food motivated, and 15% were predatory. That number is interesting because that's actually higher than what you would see in brown bears. Folks now believe there's a slow but very real rise in predatory male black bears murking people. In fact, the first ever fatal black bear attack in California just happened last month. Male blacks, Damn. but black bears that is, they have a wider range, which means a desperate down bad male is more likely to try his luck on a hiker. The last stat I have is 88% of black bear assisted census subtractions were predatory and 92% of those predatory pastimes were done by males. But when I say slow rise, we are still talking about one person <laughs> <laughs> I just love the fact that they're scared of people a lot of the time. They are. Also, apparently none of those casualties carried pepper spray. So if you do that, hike in groups and put food and garbage away, you probably won't get cooked by Smokey. In fact, the majority of black bear encounters end like a Mormon liaison where neither side gets touched. <laughs> <laughs> Guarantee that cat's gonna be talking mad shit to like all the other cats. I'd be like, man, you should have seen the size of this one cat on the fucking porch, man. I scared that motherfucker off and he ran like a bitch. He pooped himself on the way up. <laughs> so, they're flight over fight and statistically harmless, but they live in close proximity with people and are technically more likely to see US free pizza than grizzlies. So, I'll give them a 6.5. Six final answer. Not unlike their Asian cousins, and disclaimer, we're getting into the legitimately dangerous territory. Skunk the Asiatic bear. black bear, also called the moon bear, moon is bear, okay. the first honest threat to human way of life. They're way more on sight than American black bears, and for that matter, even Eurasian brown bears. To be fair, neither of them have to deal with a certain big cat. Like most bears, they're most dangerous when people run into them and the bear feels cornered, and for that reason, attacks are on the rise. From April 2023 to just November, 212 people caught the wrong end of Asiatic aggression from a black bear. Six died, and food scarcity means those numbers are probably going up. In fact, that's why they're a problem in Japan. You see, in Japan, there's a shift with young people leaving the countryside to go make bread in the big city, and food feeding bears moving into the now less crowded human neighborhoods. Now, it's never been easier to find problems with an Asian bear, and from 2000 to 2020, 2,357 black bear attacks have been recorded. 42.4% suffered severe injury, 1.2% ended up with permanent disability, and 4.8% lost the ability to exist. They're dead. And over 20% of those attacks happened in August, i.e. right around the time they're getting ready to hibernate. There was even a case they're earlier this year where a man had a... Yeah. Ain't so cute right there. Why do all the scary bears have to be cute? <laughs> I was going to say, imagine like you're just sitting there in nature. You're like, you're like sitting on a, you're like sitting on the edge of a stump taking a dump and you look over and you see that looking at you. You're just like... Did you read that? Yeah. I mean, respect. God I mean, damn. I know. Well, here's the thing. If right here, like, you have, like, you're, like, stabbing at the bear and nothing's happening, and then you look down and you just see that it's, like, latching onto here, and it's, like, literally, like, wrenched and, like, these bones are broken, and the only thing holding it together is, like, your tendons and your veins. May just, as well, I guess. Just do that. Grab, like... Grab like a, a piece of cloth, wrap it around your arm, like tighten it up with like the knife that you just used. Probably after running for a little bit. Well, yeah, yeah, of course. Or like at least quickly backing away, hoping it just is distracted by your arm meats. Yeah, well, yeah, it's just hungry. I mean, the arm with a Swiss knife after the Asian variety refused to let him. It, yes, like literally, it's what happened. Dude, Damn. look at that. Smart play right there. Basic, it, yeah. yeah, tourniqueting his arm, basically making it to where he won't bleed out. Smart play. Now, albeit shitty that he lost his arm, but still he like, kept his life. Yeah, like a boss. Go. Since Salute. this is the first bear that is a somewhat regular threat to people, I'm going to give the Asiatic black bear a 7.5. Although with the whole bear bile farming thing, ah, we probably had it coming. And now we get to my honest inspiration for this video. The brown bear. Uh, but honestly, first I'm going to clear something up. The grizzly bear is a subspecies of the brown bear, kind of like how the arctic wolf is an offshoot of the gray guy. The grizzly is basically a landlocked brown bear. They're further oh. inland, and their grocery list is a lot shorter, which is why, even though they're the most famous, grizzlies aren't even the biggest bears brown and around. No. They're smaller than the Kamchatka. What? The Kamchatka bear dwarfs grizzlies, mostly because of the fresh supply of salmon they get from shacking up on the Chumkatska Peninsula, which actually has the highest density of brown bears on the planet. There's like 20,000 of them there. And of course, 
What y'all know about the Kodiak bear? Named after the Kodiak Islands, nature was forced to vault it on. They can outweigh a grizzly by almost 500 pounds. Literally, look at that. That is a, that is a bull grizzly. That's a bull Kodiak. Kodiaks are no joke, dude. I've seen like those things charge at vehicles and just like, dude, the vehicle like was like pulling out of like this nature trail. This thing, you see it like coming through the woods at the and they take off. The the bear like ran into the back of it and like shifted the back of the truck. Yeah. It's like holy I'd be Jeez. scared to run into those even if I was in a car. Like I'd be afraid they could get into the car to get you. No doubt, dude. That's purely off the pescatarian. That is a whole mountain of a bear. Grizzly bears are smaller, but the higher competition and being gate kept from coastal calories makes them that much more aggressive, which makes them, and I don't like to curse that much. My mom watches me, but that is a fucking problem. They're like a predatory Thanos. Your demise is inevitable if they mm -hmm. green light it. They have jaws that can crush a bowling ball. Pause that mean. You're a high five away from balling like a manual Hansel. I've seen them oh. walk entire wolf packs out of food, and they might be the only thing alive that can choke slam a moose. There's only one video that truly encapsulates how fornicated you are if a grizzly chases you. Well, well, other than this. Here you have a grizzly running and way, 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 wow, we st we're still going. Way, way, oh, right there, there. That's the caribou he's after. Keep in mind, this is the 30 second mark of the video. About four minutes was all it took for the seed of Santa to get packed up like a Christmas present and turned into part of the past. But My dad uh, saw a video a long time ago and I, I, I keep looking for it. It was literally a grizzly bear like this, but you know, decent sized one. Tackling a big ass caribou, not only tackling it, but the caribou tried to stand up and get away. The grizzly bear planted itself on the ground, dug its claws in, and body slammed that motherfucker. Damn. Like, and the caribou outweighed it by a good two, three hundred pounds. Pound for pound, grizzlies are like pound for pound. Like bears are way stronger than you think. Like here, like here's the thing: average humans can lift a good amount. And then you get to like the upper echelon, like Brian Shaw, Eddie Hall, um, you know, Callie Muscle, uh, Ronnie Coleman. Those dudes can lift like massive amounts of weight. That is not even half of what a grizzly bear can lift. And that's an average grizzly bear. Jesus. How dangerous are brown bears actually? Since 1784, there have been only 82 fatal brown bear conflicts in North Still America. Still more than a black bear. Yellowstone surprisingly only has eight. From 2000 to 2015, there were a recorded 664 brown bear attacks around the world, with 95 flatlines. Of these attacks, 17% involved someone with a dog, 10% were after a bear got shot or trapped, aka the person had it coming, 20% were sudden encounters, and an overwhelming 47% involved a female with a cub, proving that the only thing- That's all, like, that's what- that's that's mm -hmm. number one. That had like honestly, like mama bear. If you ever see like bear cubs, run. Like get the fuck away from them because mama's in the brush and she doesn't like you being near her babies. Yeah, I've heard that most of the time, if you come across a bear cub, you're about to die. Oh yeah, because th that's the thing. If the mother assesses you as a threat, game over. It's like, uh, have you seen the video? Uh where the guys are in like the little kayak yeah they're there. they're rafting down the alaska yeah and, yeah. and then, uh they come around a bend and there's a bear cub on the side of the river and they're like is that a bear cub and they're like oh no yeah and then all of a sudden this mama bear just appears out of the brush and it's like half a second and she's like already in the water like almost up on them and someone fires their gun and it scares her to turn around yeah and like everybody in that boat's like oh shit myself <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that one. Oh, it's it's terrifying. Thing more dangerous than the bear. Boom, a child. No. no. <laughs> really, numbers say there's only 11 brown bear attacks in North Except America. Except in this case, it's yes. A child bear is very dangerous. Yes. Mom's not nearby getting ready to murder. The child you. bear itself is not as dangerous, but that mm -hmm. mama bear coming around. Ooh boy. Talking worldwide. In fact, the chances of getting murked by a brown bear in Yellowstone are one in two point one million. Still not zero. Still not zero. 
I do think bears suffer a lot from shark syndrome where the attacks might not happen often but when they do they're usually graphic enough to go international at the same yeah. time the worst case scenario scares me more than death itself so brown bears specifically grizzly bears get a merc rating of 8 make that an 8.5 Oh, Grizzly Man, you had to bring that one up? Fuck. Oh. Have you heard the story about the Grizzly Man? Okay, little reguiling here, but I'll keep it short. This dude right here, him and his girlfriend were big time like bear conservationists. Huge. And they would go to the wilderness, in the wilderness, and they would basically chill with bears. That's it. They would just chill with bears. And they would record them, they would video them and all that. Um, one day, they, uh, when they were setting up to go recording and all that and going out, a bear woke up early from hibernation and was very, very hungry and came across them. And basically, the video didn't catch any, like, like of the footage. It, there's no footage of the deaths but the audio is there. And the director of the film, Grizzly Man, who basically documented the de like the lives and deaths of these two people right here, he was the only one in the film who heard it. He literally sat there and listened to the whole thing. Then after he was done, he sat the headphones down and he looked at the person who like gave who let him listen to it and he says, "Destroy this. No one needs to hear that." And according to what other people have heard, have said about it, it is some of the most, like, just listening to it will literally make your skin crawl and your, and just, like, make your blood run cold from, like, the, the visceral screams and, like, screams hearing... and bones crunching and shit, probably. Hear, and hearing them get their, like, get torn to pieces mm -hmm. by this thing. It was terrifying. If you know, you know. Now the sloth bear is a great example of something I always say. You have to convince a predator you're worth the effort, where prey will off you before you get the chance. That's Most true. bears see humans as a fellow predator. The problem is here you got one that spends most of his life as prey. Sloth bears got tiger trauma in their bloodline. They also get plenty of smoke from leopards, problems from dole packs, and somehow the same elephants and rhinos that are chill-ish around tigers have zero tolerance for the baloos of the world. Add it all up, you get a floppy-faced termite eater that's also one of the most violently aggressive animals on the planet. You basically we have a giant sloth bears are like one of the only exceptions where they're not even that cute <laughs> no sloth bears are ugly as sloth, sloth bears are like the meth head bears <laughs> yeah they're like the <laughs> that's a great analogy i like that <laughs> they're like the ones that you just see just like it's like you're just standing there mind your own business and you light up a cigarette and all of a sudden dude comes around the corner he's like the fuck you say the fuck you say mother just like runs at you just like full tilt sprint just like Pulls out a knife and starts like trying to gut you. It's like, what the fuck did I do, man? Please don't God. stab me. <laughs> it's like, why? and all the tools to follow through. It's prey trauma with predatory hardware. They don't really know how to kill, they just inflict as much pain as physically possible. That's why many sloth bear victims end up with their faces torn off since that's their go-to move against tigers. A trauma bear with chimpanzee tendencies means they get a merc rating of nine. There's no good record of sloth bear attacks on people, but it's the fact that they live on top of and kill more people than other bears that outnumber them. This is technically the most dangerous bear per capita. And it's the one named after a sloth. Those In fact, one sloth bear was called the man-eater of Mysore after he killed 12 people and severely mauled another two dozen. In his defense, something like that's pretty rare, and it's believed the bear was injured by people first and then went on a rampage. I like the last bear, which is one of the few animals to see humans as prey. I'm gonna kill the suspense right now. The polar bear is a 10 from 1870. <laughs> <laughs> that's no shit, dude. No shit, the polar bear is a 10. These things are terrifying. To 2014, only 20 people have been killed by polar bears out of 73 attacks, but it's the frequency that's scary. What do I mean? Well, over 60% of attacks happened between 1960 and 2009. 20% happened from 2010 to 2014. That means in this study, 20% of all polar bear attacks happened at less. Yeah. Here's the thing. Imagine you're deep sea scuba diving in the like in the arctic you're down there like looking for like old shipwrecks and shit like that well goddamn it, way i would ever get in that water with like how cold well, it is <laughs> well no yeah, i'm just saying like, hypothetically then you look up like in your mask and you just look up and you see that you're like full like like wait a second how much air do i have left oh, 
fucking die. <laughs> or it would just be it's like, well, I'm swimming down. Yeah. It's like, it's like, I would rather go to the bottom and <clears throat> suffocate than go back up and deal with that guy. Yeah. The only thing you can really hope for is if a pot of seals, or like a, like a group of seals come through. The thing is, and they can chase... swim too, so I'm like, I'm going to hope he hasn't seen me. I'm well, yeah, go they can down. swim, but here's the thing, is like, you know, you can go deeper than it can because of your air supply. True. But, hopefully it would see like a, th a group of seals, and it would fuck off trying to chase them, because seals are its more common prey. Yeah, it would get a lot more out of eating a seal than it would you do. <clears throat> yeah, no doubt. All the blubber. All the, yeah, Jesus. And that less than 3% was in the last four years. The polar bear is the only bear that classifies as a hyper carnivore, and they'll try anything from walruses to reindeer, and they'll even body a beluga whale. As you know, polar bears are one of the rare animals that'll actively hunt people. It's true what they say, if you see a polar bear in the wild, your expiration date's already stamped. They can smell a seal from almost 20 miles away. So now that's terrifying! Mm -hmm. Christ! You know when Ice Bear pulls up, it's no mistake. The Arctic Op is such a threat in Churchill, Manitoba, it's common courtesy to leave car doors unlocked in case someone needs a four-wheeled panic room from a polar bear. The same place, by the way, that has the Churchill Polar Bear Detention Center. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's an air-conditioned temporary holding cell for polar bears that get way too comfortable around people. No other bear is more of a certified homicide once you make eye contact. But they wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for receding sea ice, basically stranding a marine mammal on land. And like with black bears, it's a starving, desperate rogue males that are most likely to turn a human into a hashtag. And that's kind of the thing. Every bear on this list would easily put humans at a 10. Like I said, Asiatic black bears are the most common victims of bear bile farms. Sloth bears are often kept as dancing tourist traps, which involves brutal maimings and shoving a rope through their nose. Literally, that's through it. Fucked and up. I'm sorry, but <clears throat> I don't advocate for like the deaths of like anybody i know that i know that there's a big controversy going on with like jack black and everything but what oh yeah did you hear like jack black made a he said he made a joke about uh when he it was basically like they blew out birthday candles and i think it was either him i can't remember if it was him or cow gas who said it but basically it was just like it's like my wish will be for the assassin not to miss the next time talking about talking about donald trump but I don't advocate for death, like, I don't like advocating for death or anything like that, but anyone that does this to, like, like the rope through the nose of this, you deserve to get mauled. You deserve to get mauled by the bear that you did that to. Mm -hmm. Because you are not a good person, and you're a shit human being. Anyway, sorry. Involves brutal maimings and shoving a rope through their nose literally through it and despite the memes humanity has done more to pandas than for them also there's the fact that most bears want nothing to do with you literally one of the best ways to avoid a bear is to actually make noise to give the bear a chance to avoid you most bear brutalities come from a bear getting jump scared and making a decision also there's bear spray but bear spray is a lot like a seatbelt you don't get into a car expecting to do a barrel roll down i-80 but the same way the seatbelt makes the worst case better so does bear spray in fact you'll probably never use it moral of the story yeah, honestly, the bear wouldn't even choose us. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. If you rock with the Merc rating thing, I actually have an entire book on the concept. A hundred animals that can, you, you can read the title. And again, each animal has a rating based on my personal bias. And because today's my birthday, the book will be hey, 52% off on Amazon. If you're interested, the link will be in the description. But other than that, drink water, cherish your parents. Remember, if it's white like a beluga, it's the last time we'll talk to you. And I'm oh, goodbye. I'll see y'all in the next one. <laughs> okay, now run away. <laughs> so good. Uh, yeah, I love I love Casual Geographic. He's just like he's just a great content creator. Mm -hmm. And uh, he always delivers consistently. Uh if so dangerous, why so friend shaped? Yep. Yeah. Uh. Except the sloth bear. The sloth bear's not really friend shaped. He's crackhead shaped. Yeah. If I was going to put bears in a horror game, it would be sloth bears. Alright. <clears throat> so we did our due diligence. We left a comment. 
which you all should go try and find on uh, the original video, which is linked in the description. Also, if you want to just go check out Casual Geographic's channel, then click his name right there. It should be, like, right below, like, where Nick's, like, like chair is right there, I think. It's usually there. But, anyway, I guess uh, that's going to do it. So, until next time, everybody, be sure to check out more Casual Geographic. Be sure to leave a like on the videos. That helps us out a whole hell of a lot. And until next time, I'm Nate. I am Nate. Be good people. Take care. Peace.